Hey friends, just got back from Oshkosh and it was a great week out there. It was great to see some of my friends from uh, out in California and the other build centers and even some, uh, some new friends from uh, uh, South Africa. It was a great show. It was great to see all the energy uh, that was there. The slings still are amazingly popular and get a lot of, uh, of attention. Um, it was really cool to be there on Wednesday and see the three highlands arrive. So a bunch of us marched out to the uh, to the flight line and watched them come in and, and land. Uh, some people had those big tall feather banners, which were really fun. It just felt kind of like a parade and a real festive attitude there. And to see the planes kind of come in, taxi together, uh, one behind the other, and then kind of right there into uh, uh, off the taxiway and right into the home built section was uh, was really really cool. It shut down and to celebrate the accomplishment of flying. 9,000 plus miles over several days. And so I want to just show you a couple of the, uh, the videos that, uh, that we took there of, uh, of them coming in. It's a lot of fun. When we brought those things in, it was really fun to walk them right in front of the, uh, the van's uh, tent and display, including right in front of the van's new RV-15. Now, when the RV-15 arrived, I went over to, to see the thing. I've been interested in following, and uh, you know, we certainly all wondered in the sling world, what's the RV-15 going to be like? Is it going to be four seats? Is it going to be two seats? Is it going to be... Uh, uh, pulled rivets versus solid rivets, what engine is it going to have? There were all those questions. Advanced did a great job of kind of keeping everybody um, uh, you know, interested with the mystery behind it all. And uh, so I went over there to, to see what the thing was uh, like. And it's an impressive looking airplane, but it really is a very, very different th airplane than the Sling Highway. I mean, they've created a, a utility, you know, stole airplane, backcountry airplane, and uh, it's probably going to be a winner for them. But it's really going after the Cub Crafters type uh, market where the Sling Highwing, Sling has created the modern 182 with the Sling Highwing. I mean, it's really a family airplane, a traveling airplane. It's not a stole airplane um, like the RV-15. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's very, very different. The two are really not that comparable. And, uh, but nobody knew until the RV-15 showed up, and then a few days later when uh, the Highwing showed up and we could really uh, look them over, it was uh, easy to see that there were just really two completely different airplanes going after two completely different markets. So a little bit about um, Linda's Highwing, a little history that a lot of people don't know about. Um, after the Highwing was announced, uh, that time Linda was living in New Jersey and I was just right up here in New York. And so Linda called me and said, Doug, I want a high wing. Somebody take my money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you haven't met Linda, she's just a ball of energy. She's a spitfire. It's just a lot of fun uh, working with Linda. And uh, so we actually took Linda's order uh, for what ended up being the first uh, kit built customer high wing. And it was fun being there, that, that initial part of it. And then eventually Linda moved to, uh, to Florida and, uh, and it really made sense to, uh, uh, you know, for her to build the high wing there, the first airplane in South Africa. But, uh, you know, it was fun playing a little part in that. And uh, certainly it's been great getting to know Linda and Gordon. And uh, now to be there and see the work of art that uh, she and the folks in South Africa have created. It really is an astonishing, beautiful airplane. The paint, obviously, the colors she's chosen and stuff are just really spectacular. But, you know, me as a builder, I'm looking at fit and finish and uh, just some of the uh, ways like the interior is laid out. It was just really, really neat. They've done a really good job with the first airplane. And I can imagine they're only going to get better and better with their interiors and refinements. I mean, it really looked like a modern airplane. It didn't look like just a shell or anything like that. It just the stitching, the seats. Um, uh, just how things, the doors even fit, even though I know they're going to make some improvements on that. There was just a lot of things that were really, really impressive with that area, uh, with that airplane. And I enjoyed 
looking it over with a builder's eye and, and, uh, and seeing some of those details. Sling has done a really, really nice job with the highway. And um, it already is a winner. It's going to be a winner. Um, it was really, really cool to, uh, uh, to get a chance to look that thing all over. So one of the reasons why Sling created the high wing uh, was just for better ease of entry. It's got that big old door, the full cantilever wing, so there's no strut in the way of getting in and out. And, uh, but, you know, nobody really knows what it's like to get in and out of the airplane until the airplane arrived. And so what I did um, so that you could see how easy it was to, or is, to get in and out of the, uh, the Sling high wing, I asked Linda to do a little demonstration for you. So here that is. Hi, my name is Linda Sollers. This is my wonderful new sling high wing called Zenzele, which means do it yourself in Zulu. And one of the many reasons, there are many things I love about the high wing design, but what, but the, the reason I started with high wings when I had my old, my Cessna T210 some years ago was because I wanted to be able to get people who are near and dear to me are and not as able-bodied in and out of the plane in the front where they could enjoy flying the plane with me. So that was actually the impetus. Since then, I've fallen in love with the high wing platform for a number of other reasons, but I'd like to show you how easy it actually is just to get in and out. Now the sling high wing does have, a, um, you can see on the other side, there's like a handhold up on the pillar. You can just put your foot here. This foot, this is particularly helpful when you have passengers who are getting in the back, but I actually find it helpful just to hop up on the seat like that. And then we have uh, a cutout in the stick so that you can get your feet in and out with ease. Simple as that. All right. So you can just do the reverse. So now you've seen how easy it is for Linda to kind of pop in and out of the, uh, the sling high wing. Um, the next question is how much space is there inside of that cabin? The presence of the airplane really looks 172. It looks like it's about the same size as a, uh, as a 172. But, uh, you know, it really is more like a 182 in that it carries 1,000 pounds and goes 140 knots. Well, that's a whole lot more than a 172 can do. Those are 182 type numbers. And uh, Linda didn't, and understandably so, allow a lot of people to sit in the airplane. But a couple people we were able to, uh, to put in there. They were unique examples. And I took some pictures that I want to share with you just to give you an idea of how much space is really inside that airplane. So the first picture here is this nice young man. He is six foot seven. And if you look closely at that picture, his head is not touching the ceiling. And he's in the back seat, mind you. His dad, who's also tall, probably six four, six five, wanted to see if they could both fit in the airplane. And so the taller son got in the back seat. And you can see. He fits in there, uh, and he's just as happy as a lark back there. Um, we could actually slide the front seat all the way to the rear position, and he still had leg room in there. His feet were under the seat, but the seat didn't hit his shins there. Um, and the, the front seat is very similar to a Cessna in that you kind of get in and out with the seat all the way back, but when you're flying, you slide it forward. So it gave him a ton of room in the back seat. So there's clearly a lot of room in the, uh, in the back seat of that airplane. Now this picture is of a young man who was 6'6 six, six or 6'7, six, um, and he's sitting in the front seat. And uh, you can see there, his head is not hitting the, uh, the ceiling in that picture. So this is a front seat view to show you that even if you're really tall with a long torso, long legs, um, either one, you can fit in, uh, in the sling high wing. They're really amazingly roomy. And uh, so front seat, back seat, the other question is how wide are they? And here is a, another picture of a gentleman. I sat in the airplane next to this guy and he had really broad shoulders. And uh, you can see he was 6'3", if I recall. You can see how much headroom he has there at 6'3". And uh, we sat in there, closed the doors, and our shoulders didn't even come close to touching each other. So there's just an amazing amount of room in the sling highway. So one of the things that got brought up there at the sling booth that I thought was kind of interesting, and I don't think I'm out of place to, uh, to mention this because the engine's no secret. Um, the Rotax 916 exists. Everybody knows that. I believe they're using it uh, for drone uh, aircraft right now. 
Um, but uh, I think you're going to see that available for the aviation world in the near future. There was some discussion about that. And uh, when we get service documents from Rotax, uh, it always breaks down what engines it's for. And you can see right in there, it talks about 916, 915 IS, um, the 912 IS, whatever uh, particular service document applies to, that airplane is in there. We see the 916 in those documents all the time. So it's no secret what the 916 is. Um, so I learned a little bit about it from our folks from uh, South Africa, that um, it's basically a 915 that they've boosted the manifold pressure for takeoff um, so that it doesn't produce 141 horsepower, it actually produces 168 horsepower for takeoff. Then once you settle back into your cruise mode, it's 135 just like the 915. So it's gonna be really interesting to see that combination engine with the high wing, because one of the other things we learned about the high wing is that the high wing and low wing, um, there is a difference in how quick they get off the ground. And if, if you've seen some of the videos, um, you can tell that the high wing takes a little longer. And what Sean, the, um, the airplane, or the sling aircraft's test pilot was saying is just the lower wing, just the ground effect has so much impact on that, that with a higher wing, you just don't have that. So until you get the speed up to get that wing flying, it just doesn't fly. Where the high wing with the lower wing, you can actually get that thing flying so much faster because of the ground effect impact from that lower wing. So, um, so the 916 engine in the high wing would be a great thing if we could get that thing accelerated a little faster and in the air a little sooner. That would be a really awesome combination. And hopefully we will see that soon from our folks in South Africa and Rotex. I also wanted to talk about in this video, if you are interested in a sling high wing, here's the process. Right now they're taking uh, position orders or deposits uh, for the airplane. They've sold a boatload of these airplanes already. Um, at the, the beginning of Oshkosh, they were talking about 140 or so, and I know they've uh, taken a bunch of orders uh, during and since Oshkosh. So I don't know exactly what the total is, but uh, to get your name in line, all you need to do is put down a fully refundable $5,000 deposit. So I would really recommend, if you think it's the, uh, the airplane for you, it's going to be a few years, maybe even two or three years before we're going to see kits uh, if you were to order one today, but I would encourage you to, to consider getting your deposit in now and uh, getting in line. You may not regret that in a couple of years when your number gets called and you can get the airplane and only to find out that there's hundreds of people behind you still waiting in line. So keep that in mind. And the other thing, if you're interested in the TSI, um, we still have space in our build center. We've got uh, a couple of planes going through right now. We've got a couple more planes coming. And uh, we've got several high wings that have been uh, pre-ordered um, that we people have positions for. So we've got lots going on here at Custom Aircraft Builders. But if you were to order a TSI today, when your kit arrived, we could get right to it. We still have uh, space in our build center so that um, you wouldn't have to wait to, uh, to get uh, into a position. We can get right on your build if you ordered your TSI today. So if you would like to do that, feel free to call me. That's always the best way to, uh, to, to reach me. Send me an email, but uh, just calling me is, uh, is the best way, and uh, my number is down in the notes below, so feel free to contact me. The other thing I wanted to offer, too, is on my website, Custom Aircraft Builders, if you go to either the High Wing um, or the TSI page um, on there, there's a little form. You can put your name um, and email address and get immediate access to what I call the build budget. Um, that breaks down all of the costs of the high wing and TSI kit. It's all on one form and, um, or one spreadsheet. And it shows you what all the, the costs, the kit costs, the engine costs, um, an estimate for avionics, paint, and all of that. And it'll show you what the bottom line number is. Uh, so again, go to Custom Aircraft Builders, look on the high wing page um, or the uh, TSI page, and you'll get access uh, there very easily to our uh, build budget. So the last thing I want to do is uh, take you out to the shop and show you a couple of the innovative things that we've done with my build uh, called First Flight. Um, this is another Build Assist customer's airplane that arrived here in April that uh, we're working on right now. Um, but we ducked in here to build room one, one because it's air conditioned, and two, we're in the middle of thunderstorms right now and it was a little quieter than out in the, uh, the hangar. So let's go out there and I'll show you a couple of things uh, that we've got going on out there with the uh, first plane. 
All right, so if you've followed me at all, um, called me, talked to me about slings, you know that one of the things that I really wanna do is get air conditioning in the sling. And I had a solution that I thought was gonna work, although it was gonna put weight in the back of the airplane, which if you know about the TSI, it's kind of a tail heavy airplane to begin with. So I wouldn't call it the best solution, but I had done it in some certified aircraft and uh, I liked the system. It was the Arctic Air real AC system. And I kind of figured out how I was gonna hook it up electrically and also duct the air around the airplane. And then I found out that uh, Arctic Air isn't able to make the unit any longer because of a circuit board issue. And uh, so I'm kind of back to the drawing board. Now the good news is there's several people now that are working on air conditioning solutions for slings. And so I'm pretty confident that we're gonna have something uh, here in the hopefully near future. I have some other ideas still, so I'm working on those and some others are working on it. So we'll see what we're able to come up with in the future. But one of the issues that I was having is weight and balance or mainly balance. Uh, if I put a 40 pound air conditioner with the parachute in the back of the airplane, I was starting to run into some balance issues um, in rear CG. And so what I wanted to do is add some weight uh, here to the front of the airplane. But in front of the firewall, there's really not a whole lot. I have uh, ordered the, um, and I'm going to install the external alternator. That's five, six pounds way out here in the front. So that's a good thing. Uh, but I wanted to add some more weight to the airplane. So what we did, though you can't see it right now, I'm gonna show you here in a second, is uh, we bought on Amazon a big 50 pound chunk of lead and uh, we cut it in two and uh, kind of pounded it into uh, to shape and covered it with fabric. And uh, we have built a tray and riveted in some really heavy duty Velcro fasteners to fasten what's the equivalent to of about 48 pounds and two bricks in a sense, right on the forward side of the rudder pedals, right in an area that there was just, there was nothing down there. So again, we've, we've created kind of a, a bracket structure, um, really heavy duty Velcro to hold it really tightly in place so it can't move at all. And um, um, did a nice job, uh, one of my guys here did a nice job covering it with, um, uh, with fabric so it looks really finished and uh, put a nice handle on it because if you had to reach up there and grab it and lift it out, uh, each one of these things is uh, about 24 pounds. So it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's fairly heavy. So, and the nice thing, they're removable. So I don't know whether I'm gonna need them or not. If I'm able to get an air conditioning solution, um, I'm gonna have the, uh, the option. And I wanted to get all of that done up here before we closed all of this up. So you can see we're in the process of hanging the engine. Uh, the heater system is going in, the avionics are all going in, the fuel lines are all going in. So we're really busy in this area and I wanted to get that uh, system done before we kind of got this too, too busy to work on that stuff. So thanks for watching this video, appreciate it. Certainly appreciate if you could hit the like button and follow our channel. Um, we're gonna be posting some more videos uh, here in the very near future as we get ready to wrap up first flight, get it in the paint booth, and uh, hopefully fly this thing here in the next few months. Um, we've got a few other TSIs coming and uh, our other build that's going, we'll be posting some videos on that uh, here in the very near future. But I appreciate you watching all the way to the end of this. Like and follow us. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next video.